Welcome back to Switzer on Sky News Money. Well, with term deposit interest rates so low and set to stay that way, yield chasers have looked at hybrids. But Andrew Lockhart of Metric Credit Partners says corporate loans might be a better return and relatively safer option to consider. Andrew joins me to explain why. Thanks for coming on the program, mate. Thanks, Peter. So before we start, explain to us what Metric Credit Partners actually does. So Metrics Credit Partners, we are direct corporate lenders. So our team, we source and uh, originate transactions and we provide debt financing to Australian corporate borrowers. So ASX publicly listed companies, we provide funding for project and infrastructure, government PPPs. We provide financing for a range of real estate borrowers, both development financing and also for REITs and we provide acquisition financing predominantly for private equity firms. Mm. What, what might be the biggest corporate loan you do? Oh, we lend in a size and scale commensurate with the way in which a bank lends. So our view, Peter, is that we look to aggregate investor capital and then we lend mm. for amounts of 30 or 40 or 50 million dollars depending on the transaction and the risk and return profile of the borrower. But we also lend uh, down to smaller amounts. So our interest is finding um, appropriate uh, credit opportunities to lend to good companies mm. where we think that uh, we can provide our investors with an appropriate return and, and a well-managed risk position. Okay, now, but you're, you're also a listed investment company. Yes, we've just uh, launched our IPO. Uh, so mm. on the 10th of August, we, we launched uh, the Metrics Credit Mar Partners or the MCP Master Income Trust to the market. Mm. We're seeking to raise up to $500 million for that particular fund. And uh, mm. at this point in time, the brokers are saying to us that we're very close to have, uh, have confirmed demand of close to $400 million today. Mm. All right, so, so basically all this money will be accumulated in your fund and where other licks might go off and buy stocks, you're going to go off and make loans to what you think are good quality companies. That's right. Peter, we, we, um, our, our funds are mixed with our wholesale investor funds, so we run a bit over $2 billion of capital for wholesale institutional investors in Australia and the capital raised on market will be combined with that and allows us to lend directly to Australian companies. So yes, we, we're in the market looking to support good quality companies, support the growth and the opportunities that they're looking to provide uh, and, uh, and, and looking for great opportunities where you know, we, can, we can support those companies in terms of their mm. debt financing requirements. Why don't you just give a quick history of the company because you know, you've been around for a while doing this, haven't you? Yeah, so we, we, uh, we're all, my, myself and my partners have all had in excess of 30 years working uh, predominantly inside uh, the, the large commercial banks in Australia, lending to direct corporate companies. Um, mm. And so we, we established our, our business in 2011. Uh, National Australia Bank is a minority shareholder in our business. They own 35% of the company. Uh, the balance of the, the company is owned by myself and my partners. Um, we're the major shareholder at 65%. So we've completed in excess of uh, 3 billion of transactions since June of 2013 when we launched our first fund. Um, mm. And uh, that's over 80 individual loan transactions since June of 2013. Okay, so some of my viewers understand both your history and your future. So historically, you would raise money uh, from, I guess, sophisticated investors, and then you would find potential borrowers, and the interest that you made from that then was the basis upon which you rewarded the sophisticated investors? That's right. So when we lend, our obligation is to understand and have a deep understanding of the company that we lend to, uh, understanding mm. the cash flows that uh, they're able to generate, and then we look to structure loan facilities to mitigate the risk of loss. But we charge fees and interest, and that interest and fees that we generate from the lending directly to those companies is passed through as the returns to our investors. Yeah. So, so the listed investment company is just like the, the, the first opportunity for smaller investors to get into the game that you guys play. That's right, Peter. We're, we're doing it in a listed format to be able mm. to give investors access to a market which is really a bank-dominated market where the loans really reside and sit on bank balance sheets. Banks lend to companies that we lend to 
and they hold those assets on their own balance sheet for their returns. So what we're doing is that providing our investors with a means to be able to access that asset class but doing it in a way where they're able to trade their units on market on the exchange giving them a liquid means to effectively access what is an illiquid uh, interbank market. Yeah, so it means that by being a lick, anyone who decides to invest in you can do it for as long as they want and decide to get out whenever they want. That's right, they can buy and sell their units on the exchange. So when we lend, we might be lending for three or five years, uh, but our investors have the ability to trade those units on the exchange. Mm -hmm. Now you make the argument in some of the papers I've read that you've written that um, you think these are definitely comparable to hybrids. In fact, you, you make the point you think they're safer. Yeah, in terms of where you sit in the capital structure of a company, a hybrid tends to be more equity-like in nature. Um, we're, not, we're not a deposit, we're not a bank deposit, so an investor is taking higher risk than a bank deposit. But the Australian regulatory and legal framework is actually favourable towards a lender. So when a, when a lender lends and you've got security over, over the company, that's a means to protect our investors from the downside risk of capital loss. Hmm. And, and, and I guess the ultimate decision by anyone who wants to invest in your company will be based on, well, how good are you guys at working out credit risks with the companies that you're lending to? That's right, Peter. It, the biggest risk an investor is exposed to investing in, in our fund is the risk mm. of credit loss. But we're seeking mm. to provide our investors with a diversified exposure. So day one, mm. an investor investing in the MCP Master Income Trust, their, their investment is diversified across a holding of not less than 50 individual loan assets. Because mm. it's a trust, the income flows straight through to the investor and we're looking to provide our investors with a return of the RBA cash rate plus 3.25% net of all fees and costs. And those mm. distributions are intended to be paid each month. Okay, mate. Well, I think a lot of people would be interested to have a look at that particular product. Good luck with it. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate your time. Okay, coming up, coming up after the break, we'll be looking at another... Telstra Award winner, a business with an unlikely name of Love to Dream. That 